if you tend to have one of these Powerade workshops that they are really legendary designs they are robust build and you know versatile you can just chuck it anywhere you like I have a, an old nickel metal hydride version as well as the lithium ion version I dissected the charging unit but the charging unit wasn't charging the battery or the lithium ion batteries I tried to technically jump start um, with the Ryobi battery but didn't work even tried to jump start between batteries didn't work again what I tried is I tried the lithium uh, battery with the nickel metal uh, hydride one and it didn't work and after five hours of filling with it I took my lab DC power supply and I tried to charge it with a different method but the problem is um, the tools this is ground this is the ground negative negative plus plus so you know we can see that the ends and the, the thing with it is that I made a mistake on trying to charge from this port this side of it and then I realized that I was actually um, connected to party wrong and yeah I mean it's not a big deal but um, you'll technically two currents will try to uh, you know run against each other and it's, it's not going to charge technically anyway after a couple of trials and you know I tried to I even opened inside of it I tried maybe just a battery and stuff and whatnot uh, went wrong I thought about that and now this one is a nickel metal hydride near yeah, my version and then I got the lithium ion ones there just, these are the lithium ones and I managed to charge one of these ones I think it was this one to a medium medium range because of that now I do believe um, once I put the whole thing together the charging unit together I believe it will start um, charging and the other thing is there's always voltage on this end with the nickel metal hydride version it's always live it gives 26 volts DC but with the lithium ion version it does not it is it is technically I do believe there's some circuitry inside I, I looked inside that there's a charging um, structure as well as you know uh, I don't know how to say it but the board as well as some you know components behind this there's like a big massive black box and it technically connects the side and you can see that's the other end technically um, which goes to the switch at the front sorry that's the front so what happens is it just technically when you push this switch it gets the voltage from one end transfers to the other end so now at the moment it's charging bit by bit I have a uh, I, I started with the lower voltage it used to have 8 volts and I'm pretty sure now it will be more than 8 volts and um, all I need is you know giving that some like giving a little bit of kick until this stops saying error you know it's just when you plug it it just like gives the error battery thingy because the battery is discharged beyond it is reading capacity and um, I just have to what I have to do is I just have to put it uh, when it reaches to 17 volts or 18 volts and then I do believe it will start charging and the other thing is um, when you're charging I don't know if that there's there's like a switch in here as originally this switch when it's in charging mode it's just like uh, when you slide the tool it actually fits um, not fits but it just like uh, stays pressed so I tried pressing it um, and holding my finger there I tried to tape it and try to stick a nail and stuff but this is very annoying so I do not know yet that if this needs to be pressed 
to get it fully charged, but I do believe that um, I'm getting a bit of um, current and voltage change here, so I do believe that uh, it's not, you know, it's not that madly necessary. And what I do believe is that, uh, yeah, I mean, it will charge to a degree and uh, will be then ready for the full test. And what what else I can add to it? Um, yeah, that's that's all pretty much. I got um, uh, I got this one that missing the battery, and uh, it's, it's roughly used. I, I bought both of them second hand. They are very versatile tools for home renovation and carrying around if you wish to do. And I don't know if you wanna do some design in the garden and cut and use it as a drill bit and stuff like that. But the main problem is number one problem is that the batteries suck batteries suck big time and um, I don't know what the company did wrong with it it's just maybe the design issue or something but um, they I tried to contact with the company no help whatsoever at all I tried to contact with the local dealer and stuff like that it's just technically this is this is nowhere to be found just you know it's uh, so no one around to help me out and no I'm helping myself out. Hopefully it will charge. And this jump start method from one battery to another did not work. Um, I tried multiple times, different batteries, different charges. I even tried to jump start from another charger to directly to the... But it, didn't, it did not work. But I do believe this method... Let me check it. It's just like close this. And let me double check it very quickly. Now let's see that if the... If the terminals are giving me any reading whatsoever at all, very quickly, I've been charging it for maybe five to ten minutes now. Yep, I, I've seen the 13 volt there for a split second. So, once you see that, there you go, that's 15, 15 point, 15 point three watts from eight volts to 15 point three watts. That's a big improvement. And all I need is just now 17 or 18 volts until the charger starts accepting it. And um, I'll just plug the charger back in and it will hopefully um, start accepting the charge and back online. So that's it. That's how you fix uh, Power 8 Workshop. And this is actually by Cell. This is, I don't know what the Cell... I think this is the... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cell Enterprise. But... Um, back in 2009 or 2008-9, whatever it was, they used to, um, Ozito, Australian brand, was the, technically the supplier of these um, Powerade workshops. So, yeah. All right. All the best. Hope that helps.